Well, welcome to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. I don't know about you, but I desire with everything within me to press into the deep waters of the secret place that I might know Him. I know from the Word, and I also know that His ways are not my ways. His thoughts are not my thoughts. And I desire so much to lay hold of His ways, to understand His thoughts, so that my life in every aspect would glorify Him. I am consumed out of an absolute love. He touched me, swallowed me up in His love. And ever since then, I am completely sold out to knowing Him. So join with me as I share insight from Mariah Wolf of Eder. And I pray that her quotes will help bring clarity and helping us press in the secret of pressing into the deep waters of His presence. And so, Father, we just come in that name, the name of Jesus. We honor the blood. We come through the finished work of the cross. Father, we want to know you. We want to receive from you today. Holy Spirit, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. Father, let your word minister to each person. Let it be life. Let it be fresh vision. Let it be a freshness, Father God, so that any area of death is swallowed up in that life. Father, I thank you that you give us eyes to see, ears to hear, so that we would hear from your word today, and that your word would, Father, so penetrate, impact, and produce in us and through us your desire, your purpose, so that you, Jesus, are glorified. And I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. I want to start by sharing some scriptures, if I may, because I want to build this very important topic, very important episode on the Word. So I'm going to be sharing a lot of scriptures. In Mark 2, verses 21 through 22, no one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Otherwise, the patch pulls away from it the new from the old, and worse, a worse tear results. No one puts uh, new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the wine is lost and the skins as well. But one puts new wine into fresh wine skins. As I want you to discover today, that the Lord wants us not just to so live a life out, trying to make ourselves better, you know, version 2.0, but a full out surrender. Because God wants us to understand that the wine of the Spirit is being poured out into new wine skins that you are to become an utterly new creation by His doing. He wants to bring forth that which is new, not something improved, but a new life in Him. And it's dependent upon the degree that we yield the secret place of our heart. Let me share something here. In Mark 2, 25 through 26, And He said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need, and he and his companions became hungry. How he entered the house of God in the time of Abathar, the high priest, and he ate the consecrated bread, which is not lawful for anyone except the priests, and he also gave to those who were with him. In the original translation, it calls it the bread of the presence. And I want the bread of his presence. If we lay hold of that, you are meant to be this new wineskin, a new creation, a spiritual being. And as a spiritual being, you need to be fed spiritual food, the bread of His presence. Edder said this, I am glad the scripture explains itself. I have not seen in the natural state. God hath in the present time revealed them unto us by the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. The new birth brings us into the realm of the supernatural. How did He reveal them? By the Spirit in this world. The Spirit searcheth all things, the deep things of God. We understand that we are spiritual beings, and we've been given the wonderful Holy Spirit, who's our teacher, and if we will allow Him, fully receive Him, as I want to show you today, and give Him access to the secret place of your life, He will bring us into the secret place of the Father. I want to go into the deep waters, but it's dependent upon me allowing the deep waters of my heart to be His, to allow the Holy Spirit to so come 
expose any area in my life, any area of my heart that has not been yielded, not been surrendered, and not allowed Jesus to be crowned king over the throne of my affection and my imagination. In Romans 8, verses 26 through 27, I want to build a bit of a foundation here. The Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words, and he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Now add to that 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. For to us God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the spirit of God. The spirit of God knows, and he knows us. He knows the deep things of you, and he knows the deep things of the Father. And the Holy Spirit is so perfectly able to intercede because he knows you. And if you allow it and you will receive him, as we'll discover, he will so enter and help you and bring you into this new life. Many of us have put patches on old wineskins. And what has happened as we try to live out the new life, there was a tear that was worse than before. And we said, God, why did I do this? Why did I choose this? And God is saying, if today you will simply come and lay the old life holy, completely on the altar, if you will surrender the secret place, that deep place in you, holy, completely to Him, and allow the Holy Spirit to so enter and to so come and minister, He will expose the deep things of your heart, understanding it, intercede for you, and bring forth the very deep treasures of the Father's heart and impart it to you. Edder said this, there are two classes of man, the spiritual man and the natural man. The natural man is the gall of bitterness. The spiritual man is born of God and walks in the spirit. He gets out into the deep. And I want to tell you that when you get to the place of wholly surrendering the secret place of your heart, you will get such a desire to get out into the deeper waters because you just so want to know Him. So much of my life held captive because there was so much bitterness in the secret place of my heart. Let me show you something, if I may, from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 and 15. Pursue peace with all men and the sanctification which no one, uh, which without no one will see God. See to that no one comes short of the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springing up causes trouble, and by it many be defiled. God wants you to so walk that out of an outflow of a secret place, holy surrender, that your heart is so in harmony with Father, that you see people differently, walk differently, because we are spiritual people, as Edder explained. We see things from a spiritual perspective, as Edder explained. Not natural. We're not wrestling with flesh and blood. And I have surrendered, so my heart now so desires to walk right, because so much of my life was dictated to by bitterness and hurt. I'd gone through so much. And as a consequence, I had built walls and defenses around my heart because I wanted no one to do that again to me. This was precious to me because that's the precious area of your life. That's the treasury of your life. That's the area that actually dictates your path forward and how we move. It either paralyzes you or it liberates you. Because that's the place that God wants to birth such fresh vision into you. But many of us can never receive that because we are paralyzed by hurt and bitterness. And as we allow it, it hurts many. Let me continue. Proverbs 4, verses 20 through 23. 
lay hold of this, that Jesus said, chapter 14 of John, that he was going away, but he was not leaving us fatherless. And the Holy Spirit is here as a father to us. And as a father, we need to, as a son and daughter, attend and hear his words. If you receive him, then we have to fully receive him, not just open the door and say, come in, but attend to his words, hear his words actively. Many of you, I've gone through many active listening classes, but there's an active listening by your spirit. Proverbs 4, 20 through 23. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your sight. Keep them in the midst of your heart or in the midst of your secret place. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their body. Watch over the heart with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life. And God wants you to lay hold of there's an outflow from your heart. And you can tell what's really in the heart by the outflow, by what comes out of your mouth, the abundance that pours forth from your heart. Edder said this, his spirit lets us down into the deep things, even the deep things of God. This is what we preach, what we practice, and what we stand on. The work of the Spirit is foolishness to the natural man, but he hath the Spirit can discern spiritual things. So that now our lives is an outflow of the Spirit of God in me. I'm not putting on a show. I'm not doing things religiously. I'm not doing things to be seen. But this is real. See, the secret place, your heart, if it's fully surrendered, out of it will flow life, the very issues of life, rivers of living water. But most of us, we can put on our church face and we can do the church show. We can say the right things because of the peer pressure of people around. But when no one's there, and when we're in, around the world, we become just like the world. We're not living epistles. We're not bringing Him glory because the secret place of our heart is not filled, surrendered, and yielded to Him. And we often play the game of looking like the world, not because we want to offend Jesus, because of a defensive mechanism of the secret place of our heart. We don't want persecution. We don't want to be hurt again. And you've got to understand that we are called to be vulnerable trusting, yielding it to the Holy Spirit. And as you do so, the Holy Spirit makes you strong in the Lord and the power of His might so that you're not facing this by your own strength, but facing it by the Holy Spirit. That as uh, editors explained, you are a spiritual being. That you don't look at things naturally, but we begin to see things through the eyes of the Spirit as the Holy Spirit brings forth revelation. Hebrews 12, 14, 15, as I've just read, we've got to understand that to see Him is dependent upon how we walk. And the degree that you see Him is the degree that you become like Him. The degree that I surrender the secret place of my heart to the Holy Spirit and allow Him to remove everything that would bring clutter, cloudiness, enables me to see Him, enables me to be transformed more and more like Him. So that what's happening is you're not just putting new wine in old wineskins. Because every year of my life, I want it to be new wineskins. I want to live this life out as the new creation. Holy, completely. Edder said, when the Holy Ghost comes in to abide, He comes into the body like rivers of living waters. Power comes from the heart and not the head. When the Spirit of God is so allowed in, so received, so welcomed that we attend to His Word, we listen to His Word, we daily, daily open up the Word and seek that fresh daily manna, bread of His presence, where the Holy Spirit speaks. And I want His sayings. You ever somebody that, you know, we like their sayings? Like Smith Wigglesworth where he said, uh, fear looks, faith leaps. I like that saying, 
but I want to lay hold of the sayings of the Holy Spirit, where he takes certain scriptures and he speaks them to me as a saying, and they now ver reverberate throughout my whole being. They grow with an intensity. My life now resonates that message because it's in me. But it has to be possessed in the secret place of your heart. So as I allow this secret place in me to be so yielded, surrendered, so the Holy Spirit is received and allowed in, a life flows from it. And I want you to press in to the deep things of God and not just where we taste, we know about. See, many people can know about a truth, but knowing about a truth doesn't change you. And it's like putting a new uh, patch on old, you know, and it tears. And many of you have been torn because you've been trying to fix and make yourself new, version 2.0. And the Holy Spirit's looking and saying, no, I want to kill the old. If you will surrender the old, put the old on the altar and allow me access to that area that's so precious to you, the area that you don't want to give. So like Abraham, the one thing he did not want to put on the altar was his son because he had waited so long for. It was the one thing he had to give and the area that we must absolutely give is the secret place of our hearts because as you give you open the door and God brings you in to the deep waters of his presence and it went on to say when you get down before God with such a determination as that you do not have to wait very long and when we come into this place and say God here I am and you present yourself, and sometimes it's with a baptism of tears, and say, I allow you to do heart surgery on me. I allow you to have access to my very innermost being. I want you, Lord, to expose anything in me that is not bowed to, yielded to, not listening to, because I want to hear what the Spirit has to say fully, and let that word have an authority in my life. I'm a spiritual being. His word is my spiritual food. And he doesn't turn up to bring me a word of sympathy where he wants me to feel good, that he understands what I'm going through. But he wants to bring a word of comfort. That's a word that deals with, ministers to, and breaks me out of what I'm in. God doesn't want to leave you in the same state, but he always wants to lift you and bring with you uh, bring with him a fresh revelation, fresh vision, and freshness so that you are always going from one level of glory to the another, constantly bringing forth greater degrees of his beauty in your life, that you are precious, and that now I'm not seeing myself through the old sinner self and all the stupidity, all the mistakes, but I'm now seeing myself through him. And more and more, I am revealing him and bringing him glory in all that I say, do, and think my life, a living testimony of Jesus. So let me finish with this. God help us to honor the Holy Ghost and let him work mighty works through us. To preach the gospel is to preach a living Christ and the power he obtained by his resurrection working in us. The resurrection of the soul in this life in spirit and oneness with Christ, the resurrection of the body, to tell the world all the good news that Christ has brought from heaven with all the benefits he purchased on the cross and left in his last will and testimony for all the heirs of God and the joint heirs with Christ. You today, if you are struggling and you are filled with hurt, bitterness, discouragement, depression, if we will simply come and repent and put it on the altar he is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness as we confess, as we give over, as we yield, and we allow the Holy Spirit. It's not you trying to make this happen. The glorious thing about this gospel, it's the power of Christ in us as we realize it's in my weakness and that surrender, the Holy Spirit comes and produces in me the thing of Christ, the purpose of Christ. And he begins to make known Jesus in and through me as I yield. 
Holiness comes by His hands, not mine. And it's all depend upon the degree that I surrender and yield the secret place of my heart. So today, let us give it. And today, let's do it out of a love, out of a passionate love, as we be swallowed up in His love. May the Holy Spirit bring to us such a revelation of what Jesus did and the price He paid for us personally. As you receive it, may it so impact you that the walls you have built up would be broken down and all the resistance in your life would fade and you would so yield, so allow the Holy Spirit to come in and minister in and through and bring forth a change that all hardness is gone. In this place of vulnerability, I am secure in Him, kept in Him, and that now I am a living epistle testifying on this earth of Jesus, who came and walked this earth fully vulnerable, yet fully secure, revealing the secret place of the Father, revealing the very heart, the very mercy, the very love, the glory of the Father. And He desires to bring into your life the deep revelation of that, to make known to you the thoughts and the ways of the Father, and that you are an heir and co-heir with Christ, and to lift you up into that place and bring you to you are a holy new wineskin. May you daily press in and receive the bread of His presence, that you would grow strong spiritually in the liberty that He obtained for you, that is available to you as you yield and allow the Holy Spirit to produce it in you. I pray you're blessed. I pray this message is simple but profound, that it ministers to you right where you're at. If it has, would you please like, share, and subscribe? As you do, you help us with the algorithms at YouTube and Google. I want to reach as many people as possible. We're living in the last days and we need to reach people for Christ. We need to see the backsliders be brought back into a real intimate relationship and it has to start with us. I pray this series and every series we produced would minister to you and help you live boldly for Jesus in this hour and be catapulted into your divine purpose. I would ask, would you consider joining our prayer partnership team? We don't ask for money. Now, I'm very grateful if God puts in your heart to be a financial partner. We need those because it takes finances to do. And what we're desiring to do, it's going to take more finances. I want in this hour to reach as many people as possible. God has put in my heart to do everything, to sell out 100% that we're in the last hour, reach as many backsliders. And it's going to take finances to do that. And I thank God for those people that God would so inspire to be a part of that. But most importantly, I know the importance of having prayer partners. And by prayer, we produce the right word in season. And by prayer, that word has impact. And that is priceless. As prayer partners, you commit to praying. And you also pray for the partners. So people are praying for you. And you get access to our, our Zoom meetings, ministry times. And I also believe that when we stand before the Lord and receive a reward for all the lives changed, just read some of the testimonies. All partners share in that reward. That is truly priceless. It is simple. You just go to the website, robertparis.org, and go to the partner page. Amen. We don't ever ask for money in any of those meetings any of those emails. You receive our newsletter by email. We want to build you up and encourage you. And I know many people don't have the money. And I want to reach every single person fully, completely, because freely he gave, freely we give. Amen. Thank you for watching. I encourage you to check out more series. May they bless you, help you, inspire you. Be blessed and know that you are loved and appreciated. And this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because of, through, and for Him in Jesus' name. May you be blessed out of your socks. Thank you for watching. In Jesus' name, amen.